Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM19 story, part of the furniture with me, Daniel. It's season 4, episode 5, and today we move into the January transfer window, as promised, with a big game against local side Yeovil. At least it was when we planned it in the last episode, but Yeovil are sliding down the league now and are in 10th position at the moment. There's only one place to start on this home screen. We're nine points clear of the playoff places now, and that's almost solely down to one man, Owen Jack, who has 21 goals in 25 games. Look at his development, four-star ability, five-star potential, and he just gets better and better every week. He keeps training well, he keeps playing well, and I absolutely love this guy. I honestly feel like he could take us all the way to the Premier League at the moment. I know I may be proven wrong there, but he's got all the attributes, he's just 18 years of age, and he's got so much more potential to fulfil. But the reason we're starting with him is because the most important thing we mentioned in the last couple of episodes is that he had a release clause in his contract which would have allowed him to go for about 375 grand this window. We've managed to get him a new deal, we've had to pay him a little bit more and we had to add a non-promotion release clause to get him to sign. But it looks almost certain we're going up this year and we can negotiate a new one towards the end of next season if need be. But an absolute superstar for us and with Broger just being on loan and Nelson Nelson and our other striker we've signed being quite poor, we needed to make sure this one worked. So Owen Jack is staying with us and nothing is going to change that, no matter what the bid is. But since the last episode we have made one or two more signings on free transfers. We'll come to the transfers out in a moment that are going through. Mikhail Kennedy has left the club. He was relegated to fifth choice striker with the arrival of Elliot Lee and he wanted to get some first team football. He's been an absolute star for us. He was our first superstar striker of the series and was doing in the lower leagues what Jack's doing for us now. 51 league goals for the club and we've even managed to get 60,000 out of him as he moves on to Millwall. A brilliant purchase. We got him on a free halfway through that first season after an initial loan spell from Charlton and we will remember him fondly for the rest of this series. But a couple of players in, one we've mentioned already in John Richards, it was pre-agreed near the start of the season. He's been playing for Chester and doing rather well for them in the regional leagues. And now we're looking forward to seeing how he develops here. The other one we got in was Jarvis Adoba, I think that is. Apologies if the pronunciation's wrong. He's a three-star centre-half, just a backup for now, but on £600 a week we couldn't turn this down. It's an area we were really lacking depth, only Platt was of any quality off the bench. So to have four good centre-halves is absolutely crucial for us moving forward. But the other one you did notice on the transfer screen is Nick Freeman's on his way out. We've agreed a £140,000 deal with Oxford. He's not been quite the same player this season. An average rating well in the sixes. And he's just been complaining about all the little things. Obviously we had the issue with him back in the summer when Rotherham put in that stupid little low bid but it really unsettled him. He's complained about training since and we've had to adjust his individual training to make it fit his needs. And at 26 he's one of the worst players in the starting lineup, so I'm not too worried about letting him go and I'm sure we'll be able to find a replacement long term. We've still got Clarkson on loan for the rest of the season so we don't need to worry about it too much at the moment. But most importantly, before we get into this game today, we need to take you through the schedule. We've had loads of games since the last episode where we beat Peterborough narrowly in the FA Cup. We went away to Stevenage in the Checker Trade Trophy. We won it on penalties. It was the final group game. We rotated entirely because we were already through. But Andrew Nelson got a goal in that one and we scored every single penalty, which I thought was good. Obviously, Stevenage are featuring quite heavily in our other series, the head coach at the moment. So if you're not up to date with that one, I'd recommend checking out the last couple of episodes because they've certainly been quite dramatic and Stevenage have been at the forefront of that. We then went away to Peterborough in the league this time. We drew two all, two goals in the 87th minute. It was a bizarre game, but we got a point and we're happy enough with that. We then beat Wickham narrowly at home, 3-2. It was 3-0 after the hour. But unfortunately, we just eased off the gas a bit too soon and nearly let them back into the game. Tom Walker with a brace from the left and Armando Broger with a goal too. Our away form continued to be poor at Maidstone. We lost 3-1 in that one. Two goals in the first minute this time. But unfortunately, we were outplayed and deservedly lost in the end. Maidstone are right up there. I think they're third at the minute. They are. So there was no shame in that one. It was always going to be a tough game. 
We then went to Bradford in the second round of the FA Cup, a good League One side, and they beat us with a stoppage time goal. We defended valiantly in that one. You can see Matthew Platt got a superb rating, and Phillips in the deep line midfield role was really good too. But it wasn't enough, and we deservedly went out in the end. But we did follow it up with a big 3-0 win at home to relegation strugglers Morecambe. They had a sending off but we were already 1-0 up and two late goals compounded the misery for them. Owen Jack continuing his goal scoring form in that one. We then played Yeovil in the second round of the Checker Trade Trophy. Again we rotated heavily. Andrew Nelson got sent off in the 11th minute of this one. We played the rest of the game with 10 men, but still managed to grind out a penalty shootout. And I am delighted to say that Joe Piggott missed the penalty. The laziest footballer I have ever seen in the flesh. And his miss ensured that we went through to the third round, where we'll be playing Oxford at home. We then went our seventh game in a row away from home without a win. A 3-1 defeat at Crow Alexandra. Again, they're right up there in 4th or 5th place. So we couldn't begrudge them the victory. Adam Phillips with a consolation. But we were already 3-0 down and outplayed. By the side we're managing in FIFA 19. But we did finally break our away duck in the following match. A 3-1 win at Crawley. We were absolutely outstanding in this match. Owen Jack got a goal and then Phillips a brace. A late penalty from Crawley did nothing to dampen our mood as we produced an absolutely brilliant performance. And then the busy Christmas period started, two games in two days. Firstly, a narrow win at home to Notts County, a fortunate own goal that won us the game, but Owen Jack on the score sheet again. And then a 6-1 home win against Blackpool. They were obviously running out of steam towards the end. I couldn't even make subs in this one because I was so impressed with what I was watching. And to be fair, most of the lads on the bench had awful fitness where they'd been rotated out of the side. Owen Jack got four goals in this one. They did bring the score back to 2-1 at one stage, but Brozier and Westbrook added to Jack's goals in the second half, and we ran out 6-1 winners with an emphatic victory. We go into today's game against Yeovil full of confidence, but we have only won one of the last eight away games, so it could be a little bit tricky. Let's show you the lineup we've got for this one. Obviously Freeman's still here at the moment, but we are going to be looking for a right winger in January. And hopefully our deadline day special in the next episode, followed by a game against Lincoln who are second at the moment, will be an absolute humdinger as we look for a player. We're just about favourites for this one, and we've got the best 11 we possibly can, injuries and fitness issues aside. So Bass is in goal as usual, Fatey and McCabe are the fullbacks with Davis and Byrne in the middle, Freeman and Walker are the wingers with Clark and Westbrook in central midfield, Phillips is fit again but I couldn't drop Westbrook after the last game, and then we've got Broger and Jack continuing up front. Broger did have a little bit of a goal drought, but he's got a few in the last couple of games, and hopefully that will get his confidence back to sky high. Let's get into it and see if we can get another win. It's a 4-4-2 for Yeovil as well. Piggott's playing again from the start. We can only name six subs today as Rogers, who we normally put on as our homegrown player on the bench, he's on loan from Yeovil, but hopefully that won't affect us too greatly. We're not going to say too much to the lads, other than prove a point. They've been praised and they've got to prove why. Everyone's motivated, which is good, and we've made a couple of slight tactical tweaks too. We've gone to a positive mentality, and out of possession, we've pushed our defensive line up, as well as our line of engagement. We just want to try and get higher up the pitch, because where we were soaking up pressure, we weren't good enough in the fullback areas, particularly on the left-hand side, to cope with it. We've got a tunnel interview today. The squad's happy. Mikhail Kennedy's not really caused any unrest. I've got a national reputation now, which is good to see. The transfer window is open and we are looking for the right player. And our ambitions are matched by the chairman, who's looking for yet another parent club for us. We're not going to talk about what transfers we want. It's a pre-match interview and it's not appropriate. Let's zoom out a tiny bit so we can see the whole pitch as Yeovil come forward from the kickoff. Led bitter with the ball out to the right, but McCabe's able to get there our fullback, and the highlight ends at nil-nil. But it's Yeovil coming forward again with Naismith. Plays a 1-2 with Ledbitter. Back to him again on the edge. And now Quintero goes for the shot. It's blocked by Davis. Second time it's the post. And Facey has to scrap it away. And it's out for a throw in on the oval right. They'll take it again with Naismith. Westbrook heads it away. But it's only fallen as far as Ledbitter. Out to Quintero on the edge. Deflects to Henry. Great block by Facey. And now it's Westbrook charging forward. He comes over halfway. Ledbitter makes the challenge. Though, and Whittaker's in 1-1. He must have been offside. It's gone wide at a post, but the flag was so late there, and that did have me worried. 
The corner's coming in from Yeovil. They're dominating this game. Henry ends up and they've scored. And we've got to drop to a standard mentality because we are being outclassed in this one. They might have dropped down to 10th, but they've still got one of the best sides in the league. And we need to be really careful with them coming forward. Jack with a free kick into the box. Bennett heads away, but only as far as Walker. Out to Jack on the right flank. He's gone back inside to Westbrook. Switches the ball out to Broder on the left. Really, we'd quite like the target man to be in the box. McCabe's got the ball into Broder again. Challenged by Naismith and it's cleared away. And now Whitaker comes forward on the left. I'm pretty sure that's Whitaker who we've got at Stevenage in our head coach series. Piggott's in one on one. A great save. The rebound hits the post. And the misery would be compounded if he scored. But so often we've produced this away from home. Just a terrible performance out of nowhere. We're absolutely flawless at home, but we just cannot get the wins on the road. Melbourne on the left for Yeovil who are charging forward again. Henry shoots and Bass puts it wide and we're going to start to dig into these lads because if they were motivated at the start they're certainly not showing it on the pitch. Quintero with the corner which Davis heads away. I have no idea by the way why we switched to a green kit when we're playing against the Yeovil side in green. He's out to the right hand side with Naismith again. Hales Doherty to Naismith. He's got to the byline, tries to deliver a cross, but it's blocked away. Is this highlight ever going to end? We haven't even seen a shot from it yet. It finally does, and it's still 1-0 to Yeovil. It's Yeovil with the goal kick again. We've finally gone 10 minutes without a highlight against us, but that's going to end now as Leb Bitter gets the ball in midfield. They've absolutely dominated the game, but McCabe heads away to Clark and now Westbrook. Over the top, Owen Jack, can he produce a bit of magic? He can't. The ball's aimless and doesn't even find him. Leb Bitter to Quintero again. They play a 1-2. And a third time they've got the ball in the middle. There's no pressure on them. It's just not working at all. And we're going to really have to rethink our game plan. It's very rare we play a 4-4-2 and get out class by another one. Henry gets into the box, shoots for the bottom corner and Bass has to make a smart save down to his left. Half an hour gone and we deserve to be behind. The half time whistle goes, there's no more highlights but that's been one of the worst performances this season. I can't remember a game where we've been dominated that badly but at the break it is 1-0 and we are going to dig right into these lads. Considering they won 6-1 in the last game, I'm pretty sure they've just come in arrogant and as a result they've suffered against a good League 2 side. Byrne gets the ball into Westbrook. Let's not forget at the start of the season, Yeovil were the clear and outright favourites to win the title so they are obviously a good side on paper. They've just had a little sticky spell in the last few games. Piggott's trying to get on the end of a goal kick, but McCabe wins it. Quintero recovers possession though, and they're just first to everything. We can't compete. Whitaker's got the ball in the box again. Piggott with the header, and it's over the bar. A couple more minutes and we'll be making changes. I've had enough now. We're 10 minutes into the second half. Westbrook's coming off for Phillips. On the left-hand side, McKendry's on for Walker. And Freeman's going to be replaced by Clarkson. Three in the midfield, four are off, as that's where we're being overrun. Let's see if it makes a difference. An hour gone, we're still 1-0 down. And Whitaker's in down the left-hand side now for Yeovil. Switches the ball to Doherty. Whitaker again, and Bass has to make a good save. We're going to go attacking. The more attacking we go, the more we should push forward. But we're just getting pegged back and further each time. The corner comes in, but the highlight ends before we see what happens. Melbourne with a throw again for Yeovil. Whitaker finds Henry. Tries to deliver, but it deflects to Howes Doherty. Cleared away by Davis. Now Owen Jack can finally start a counter. Goes long towards Broger. He finds Phillips. He's got Broger running off him again, but goes right to Clarkson. From the byline, crosses to Jack, but it's just headed away. And now Clark on the edge shoots, but it's over the bar. But finally, a bit of attacking vigour from this Torquay side. 20 minutes to go. It's still 1-0. Quintero out on the right to Doherty. McKendry wins it back to substitute and now Clark. Phillips into Clark again. Over the top, Owen Jack's in. Can he save us again? He's in one-on-one -on -one and he's missed. Owen Jack doesn't miss those. It's over the bar and that is by far our best chance of the game. We're still 1-0 down and I don't know if we're going to get a better opportunity than that to equalise. Just a minute of normal time to go. Rowan McDonald, one of our stars from last season. He's on loan at Yeovil and has just come on at centre-half for the goal scorer, weirdly. Whitaker's charging forward on the left. He finds Melbourne inside to Leadbitter. Whitaker again, playing just as well as he has been for Stevenage for us. Quintero gets it out to Melbourne and we're back inside to Leadbitter. We're on an attacking mentality, but we just can't get the ball off them. They switch it to right back and can start to build an attack again. Back to Bennett, the centre-half, and now McGarvey. He finds Bennett for the 
the third time. They're just playing it between the two of them. There's no pressure. And Bennett eventually goes long. And Whitaker's flicked it on. He's in one on one. Great effort at goal. And Bass has to tip it behind for a corner. A minute of stoppage time to go. And this is not where we want to see the ball. He's out to Quintero on the left again. Delivers towards Whitaker and he's headed away. But it's straight to a Yeovil player again. They have absolutely dominated this game. And we can't begrudge them the victory because we've been appalling. The arrogance we've shown after a 6 1 win is clear to see. And that's what happens when you do that. The lads deserve to lose and hopefully it will be a kick up the backside for them. Certainly with a January window open, not the best time to produce that performance for some of them. But Ledbitter's got the ball to Whitaker, and Yeovil are finishing the match in the most professional manner possible. Keeping the ball and attacking the goal. Bass makes a save and he's got 20 seconds to clear it downfield. He's just time wasting. Clear the ball, son. It's gone long over the top. Jack will get on the end of it, Willie. It's one last chance to deliver. Clarkson delivers for Broger. Oh, it's a great save by Rowley. I thought we were going to nick an undeserved point there. It was a brilliant clear-cut chance and a fantastic save by the oval keeper. We deserve to lose, but when you see that chance, you do start to get a bit frustrated. A terrible performance overall, and again, we're going to be assertive and tell them it wasn't good enough. Hopefully, they'll react in the next game where we play strugglers filed, but away from home, that's just one win in nine now, and we've got to start being worried about that. We're still five points clear of Lincoln. They didn't play. But let's see what they said about the game. I'm sure the media will agree with me. They do. Yeovil grab a deserved win. We can't argue with that. We'll do the press conference in a minute. But let's see when we're going to come back for the next episode. I think we'd already pretty much decided. We're going to show you transfer deadline day at the end of January. As I promised in the summer. And then we'll play the big top of the table clash against Lincoln. Which will hopefully still be the case then. First v second, then it could be a brilliant spectacle to watch. But that will be all for this episode. It's the first one from this series in 2019. So I hope you all had a good new year and a Merry Christmas before that as well. If you did enjoy this episode, please put a thumbs up on it. Let me know in the comments what you think I can do away from home. We seem to be struggling badly. I've tried balanced mentalities, deeper defensive lines. Nothing seems to be working and I'm not quite sure if I need to go back to my 4-5-1. If so, I probably need to bring in a holding midfielder. If you haven't seen the special mini-series we did at Christmas from FM19, then go and check that one out. We did a four-part challenge and I had quite a lot of fun recording it, so hopefully you'll enjoy it too. Subscribe to the channel for daily FM19 content from these two long-term stories. This one part of the furniture with Torquay United, where we're hoping to battle for promotion in Season 4. And our other series, The Head Coach, where as we mentioned a couple of times, we've just been on the move again and we're now at our first professional club. If you're not up to date with that one yet, now's a perfect time to catch up. We'll also have weekly content from our FIFA 19 lower league career with Crew Alexandra, who are of course one of our promotion rivals in this series this year. But a massive thanks for watching this one as always, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>